It's a Friday afternoon at the Samsung shipyard in South Korea, and a giant step forward in the creation of Shell's Prelude project is about to be taken. Just three months ago, the keel was laid for the world's first floating liquefied natural gas facility, and one of the most ambitious engineering projects in the world of energy began to emerge. Today, Willie Gray is carefully preparing for the next big milestone. His team is responsible for what the engineers like to call the substructure. Put simply, it's the biggest hull ever built. This is part of the half section, so 60,000 tonnes. For over a year now, Willie has been hard at it, working long hours to make sure it all takes shape. My wife always complains that I'm married to Samsung and not to her. She's actually just uh, left today to go back to the UK. I'm not sure if uh, tomorrow's event's got something to do with that. Tomorrow, Willie's team faces the biggest test yet in this daunting challenge. After months of sweat and toil and precision engineering, two sections of the enormous hull are set to be joined together. To do that, the 60,000 ton half section must be transported across Goje Harbour to join its twin. It's an operation that will require all the skill of a surgeon. So Willie and the team are making doubly sure everything is in place. There's a few thousand blocks underneath keel blocks. If they are off the tolerance, then you may have a punctured bottom plate or some indents. If all goes to plan, by Monday, nearly half a kilometre of hull will be perched neatly on top of those blocks in the dry dock. If it doesn't, it could seriously jeopardise this world first project. We're not expecting that to happen, but uh, we actually won't find out until Monday morning. Yeah? So uh, I suppose there'll be a few people uh, maybe thinking about that a bit over the weekend. It's summer vacation season in South Korea. The shipyard is almost entirely on holiday, except for the team working on Prelude. At midnight, the valves open and the delicate process of sinking the floating dock begins. Millions of litres of water enter the ballast tanks beneath the surface as the dock slowly submerges, for the first time, the 60,000 ton structure begins to float. By daybreak, when Willie arrives, he's greeted with this. Well, everything's uh, going quite well, actually. It has a little bit of uh, yield towards port side at the moment. That'll be uh, adjusted using the ballast pumps on board. We will uh, see how that progresses and how long that's going to take. Over at the dry dock, it's a slightly different procedure. Water floods in, gradually easing the aft section off the keel blocks below. But things don't go completely to plan. In the early hours, a small leak in the ballast tank forced the operation to grind to a halt. Fortunately, the problem was quickly solved. At daybreak, everything is in place and the gates to the dry dock now can be removed. By midday, conditions are heating up. Temperatures have soared into the high 30s the Samsung project manager, D.U. Lee, is getting an update. He's been working here for years, but has never built anything like this before. The condition is so calm. It is very, very useful to plot for this project. So I think God help us now. At one o'clock, the marine crew takes control, boarding the hull to prepare for the tugboats. No less than six will be needed for the job. For Willie's team, it's a proud moment. So it's a culmination of a lot of effort by the shipyard, a lot of uh, pre-planning. I think probably in about uh, 30 or 40 minutes from now, it should be entering into dry dock number three. And right on schedule, the launch begins. The tugs navigate a one and a half kilometre stretch of the harbour then wrestle the hull through the gates of the dry dock. Inside, the full scale of the project is beginning to emerge. 
I think it really comes to light now the size of the, the facility. Um, you look at the top section on the, on, on the top deck, we've got 40 metres above that yet, so yeah, it's massive. So you've got so many facets. You've got the marine piece with the hull structure, you've got the process piece which sits on top, as well as the communications piece. I've been around Shell for 32 years, this thing has got to be one of the biggest things I've ever seen in my life. It's been 17 hours, and so far, so good. But as the day draws to a close, one of the most critical parts of the whole operation is about to begin. Hundreds of tension lines are hooked up. As water leaves the dry dock, these ropes will be twisted and turned, gradually pulling the hull onto the keel blocks below. It's a dangerous operation that needs to be carefully managed. And if one of the ropes were to snap, the consequences could be fatal. The procedure continues through the night it will be morning before the Prelude team can truly gauge its success. At sunrise on Monday, the Samsung shipyard springs back to life. Thousands return to work where the two sections are now standing tall. For Willie, months of planning has come down to this. It's time to inspect the hull. The dry dock is already buzzing with activity. Willie and Arto get straight to it, checking for any signs of damage. We're just making sure that there wasn't any heavy touch points during uh, launching or uh, keel touchdowns. It all looks uh, perfectly okay. Now to the critical point, where the hull comes together. If, if you look through the gap here, you, you can see all the way up to the upper deck. Despite all the challenges, it's come down to just millimetres. The gap is fairly uniform at 10 millimetres and the offset between the two sections is varying between 10 and 20. The two blocks match perfectly. The sections are a world away from becoming the hull of the largest offshore floating facility ever built. It's a huge achievement for the Prelude team, but Willie knows there's little time for celebration. We've done well so far. But the challenges ahead are uh, great, but not insurmountable. There's much to be done, but the creation of the world's first FLNG facility has just moved closer to becoming a reality. Mm -hmm.